What's up everybody, Dr. Josh Binstock here at Athos. I'm here to talk to you about a condition that I've been seeing a lot coming into the office, uh, something called anterior pelvic tilt that's responsible for low back pain. So since people have been working from home, a lot of students have been at school um, online, uh, the increased amount of sitting has really caused a lot of back pain. Um, so it's from something called anterior pelvic tilt. If you're wondering if you have it or what that is, really it's just mean your pelvis is tipped forward. So if you think about your pelvis uh, being a, a glass of water, a little bit of pelvic tilt is normal, but excessive will cause that water to spill out. As well, if you think you have it, you can either look in the mirror or check out your posture otherwise, and you might see that your lower back is starting to arch a little bit, uh, the bum kind of sticks out, the front of the abdomen protrudes out, and that's what's uh, indicative of pelvic tilt. So the way we create balance back into the hips is stretching those short overactive muscles and strengthening the longer underactive muscles. So we're going to start off with stretching those muscles. So the big one, like I said, is the hip flexor, specifically the psoas. So we have Tori here helping us. She's the naturopathic doctor here at Athos and also international beach volleyball player representing Canada. So what she's going to be doing is stretching her hip flexors, the psoas. So a variation to that hip flexor stretch, if you don't want to go on the ground, is you can put your leg up on something elevated, whether that be a bench, a chair, a couch, a bed, whatever you have at home. Uh, you might feel like you have a better stretch with that, and sometimes it's easier than going on the ground. So this move is gonna be the same. Tori's gonna to be shifting forward, and again, focusing as she's shifting her pelvis forward, keeping trying to posteriorly pelvic tilt by activating her glutes and her lower abs and pushing forward through, so you should feel it right in that hip flexor there. And again, if she wants to increase the stretch she feels, she'll lean the other way as she's coming forward. And again, hold that for 30 seconds. The other group of muscles that we want to stretch are the shortened lumbar erectors. So the way you can do that is get something sturdy and go into a squat position that's you, the farthest you can go. Uh, Tori's going to go down to the ground, but if you can't get to the ground, you'll still feel a stretch at your end range. So what she's doing is leaning back, so she's totally relaxing all of her body and the only thing that's holding her is her arms, so she should be feeling a stretch in the lower back. Now, once she's there, she can hang out there for a bit. Also lean one way, so you'll feel it in the left erectors, and then she can lean the other way and feel it in the right erectors. So just hang out there and stretch it out for about 30 seconds. So the first exercise we're gonna do is strengthening the hamstrings and the glutes. When you activate those, that will help put the pelvis and a posterior pelvic tilt, when in reality, it'll just be less of an anterior pelvic tilt. So, first way we're gonna do that is an exercise called the glute bridge. Um, very simple exercise, but when done properly, can be very challenging and difficult. So, Tori's gonna get a glute band, um, which are pretty common, and that's gonna be working the glute med as she's working the glute max. <clears throat> so she's gonna put it just above her knees, find a position of the feet that's not too close, and also not too far. So you wanna be comfortable and find a mid-range. What she's gonna do is press her pelvis up, trying to use her heels and hamstrings to come up. So, now the key is, you don't wanna be arching through your back. So you really wanna be using your glutes to push through. So her pelvis is probably the highest thing to the ceiling that we want instead of her stomach. The key as well is you might not be able to see as she's actively bringing her heels towards her glutes, which will activate the hamstrings and the glutes as well. Now, to make it a little bit more difficult, she can, Elevate one leg while keeping the pelvis steady. So she's doing a good job of that, but what would happen if you get fatigued or tired, it would tip and she would lose that. So what you wanna make sure is you come up, pushing through, holding that pelvis level the whole time. What we're gonna do to strengthen the hamstring and the glutes is the single leg lunge RDL Romanian deadlift. So what she's gonna do is bend over, pick up a weight that you're comfortable with, challenging but still doable and she's gonna be lunging forward, hinging at the hips. Go ahead. Now, she's getting a stretch of the psoas on the opposite one while she's working the hips. So she's gonna go down as far as she can while keeping her back neutral. A lot of times we don't wanna see the bending of the back, the rounding, we wanna keep it neutral. And you're pushing through the glute to come up. So she's gonna do a couple reps and see how the back is staying neutral, using the glute to come up. If you're doing this properly, your glute should be on fire by the end. The other muscle groups we want to strengthen are the lower abdominals. So before we even get into that exercise, I want you guys to try to feel what it's like to put your pelvis in an anterior pelvic tilt and a posterior pelvic tilt. 
So what you'll see Tori doing is when she's in anterior pelvic tilt, you'll see some space under her back and that will come up. And posterior pelvic tilt is her back will be flat along the ground the whole time. So for these exercises, I want you guys to feel like what it's like to be in posterior pelvic tilt the whole time. So I want your lower back to be in contact with the ground the whole time. Now, once you're set there, she's gonna go in a dead bug position. So many of you have done the dead bug before. We're not gonna worry about the arms part right now, we're just gonna do the lower part. So she's gonna go in 90-90. The whole time again, her back is in contact with the floor. Now one leg at a time, to start easy, she's gonna go down and tap her heel and opposite. So you really wanna keep your abs engaged and make sure your lower back doesn't come off. Now, if it doesn't come off, you can challenge yourself more by lengthening your legs and making it less straight. Now, you don't have to go all the way straight right away. You can go 45 degrees, right, perfect, and then come back up. So challenge yourself. And if that's still doable and you can see that her back is still in contact with the floor, then she can go all the way down and come back up. So that's a way to work that lower abs. Another exercise to work the core and specifically the lower abdominals is the plank. Now, another simple exercise, but very effective if done properly, and to target a little bit of the lower abs so you can work on the posterior pelvic tilt, we can do an RKC plank. So the difference is you're gonna interlock your hands and have your feet just a little bit wider than the normal plank. So Tori's gonna come up. Now, with the normal plank, you wanna stay flat, but with the RKC, you're doing a little bit of a pelvic tilt. Right, so you wanna contract your glutes, hold it there, and have a little bit of a pelvic tilt and hold there for as long as you can. 30 seconds, work up to a minute. A variation to the plank, you can add a core ball. Um, many people have core balls at home, very inexpensive to get, but very effective because it adds a dynamic component to it and creates some instability. So what we're gonna do is a mini jackknife exercise. So initially you're gonna go out and hold strong and keep it straight just like you were with a, a front plank core. But what you're gonna do is raise your glutes by contracting your glutes and raise the pelvis. So you're gonna do this a few times and you should be focusing on the lower abs, contracting your lower abs and your glutes to create a little bit of a pelvic tilt in the pelvis and you should feel that lower down the more you do that. Also, you can create more difficulty by making your legs a little bit more narrow on the ball and easier to widen them on the ball for balance. Mm -hmm.